Good morning and welcome to Advent of Code in F Sharp Day 14. Um, before we get started, I wanted to issue a small corrective statement because yesterday um, I made a claim that oh, you needed this uh, exotic mathematical theorem to solve the problem. Turns out that's not the case. There's like a, uh, the numbers have certain properties that you can use um, to make a, a kind of naive algorithm yourself. So my statement that you absolutely needed this uh, spoilerish uh, theorem was not correct. Uh, if you want to see someone solve it using the uh, no theorem approach, I recommend the uh, streamer Liz Fung Jones or Liz the Grey. And she solves the puzzles in mostly in Golang. And she takes that approach for day 13. And she's also hell, uh, really fast. She solves like most puzzles within minutes. It's it's uh, truly cool to watch. But let's look at today's puzzle 14. And uh, the, on Liz's stream, that's where also like she she saw what's happening on this uh, weird order of puzzles. It's like this is the map <laughs> we're going up again. So that's why 14 is uh, up here. Anyway, day 14, docking data. As your ferry approaches the seaport, the captain asks for your help again. The computer system that runs this port is not compatible with the docking program on the ferry, so the docking parameters are not being correctly initialized. Okay. After a brief inspection, you discover that the seaport's computer system uses a strange bitmask system. Oh, bitmasks. Uh, so that's like the 1100255245 for IP addresses? Yes. <clears throat> also, you don't have the correct decoder ship handy, you can emulate it in software. Of course we can. The initialization program, our puzzle input. Uh, oh, init are we getting, are we going to int code puzzles? Holy, m <laughs> let's copy our input and let's read on because no, it's not really int code, but it looks, it looks amazing. Mask, mask, mem, mem, mask, mem, cool. <clears throat> so initialization program can either update the bit mask or write a value to memory. Values of memory addresses are both 36 bit unsigned integers. That's a weird bit bit number. Okay. For example, ignoring bit masks for a moment, a line like mem8 is 11 would write the value 11 to memory address 8. So okay, we have an address space. And we can write stuff to the addresses and everything. Addresses and values are 36 bit unsigned integers. Okay. Bitmask is always given as a string of 36 bits as well. Yes, written with the most significant bit on the left and the least significant bit on the right. Why is this stated explicitly? Is this like counterintuitive? I don't think so. Uh, the current bit mask is applied to values immediately before they are written to memory. Sorry? So the bit mask, the current bit mask is applied to values immediately before they are written to memory. Zero or one overrides the corresponding bit in the value. And X leaves the bit. Okay, so we have like this uh, a, s a single bit mask somewhere and every time we write something to memory, we apply the bit mask. And if it's a 1 or a 0 in the bit mask, we take that value. If it's an X, we leave the given value untouched. Unchanged, yes. So, if the bit mask is leave everything as is, except the 1 here and a 0 here. And we get some instructions to store stuff in memory. Yeah. Yeah. What's the 64 bit? Okay, so the bit for 64 is like 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, yeah. And then we try to write something to memory address 8, yes. By expanding everything out to individual bits, the mask is applied as follows. The way he states it is like, this is a naive thing to do. <laughs> That's actually what I was thinking of doing. Interesting. 
by expanding everything out into, yeah let's go for that for part one because i don't yeah let's go for that uh because of the mask the value 73 is written instead of the value 11 because we tweak some bits yeah okay actually um 36 bit we have 36 bit numbers let's let's quickly see how uh, uh how big our numbers are going to be that's a that's a big number that's a big number So this is the max number. Yes, it's not an integer. We'll be fine with long. Um, that's not what I'm trying to do. We'll be, be fine with long. Yes, you can look this stuff up. Yeah, well, we're super fine. Okay. So, okay. The strategy we see in the example is convert to convert like the decimal numbers we get to ah yeah, so that's, that's interesting actually so our bit mask is a mask in bits and our index indices are like just integers and our values because they are like 11 1010 they might look like bit strings or like binary numbers but actually they are not they are decimals confuse but okay is it is it though is our input does it contain something else than ones and zeros yeah it definitely does okay the mask has no effect as the bits it overwrote were already the values the mask tried to set okay yeah finally the program tries to write zero to the address eight so when we try to write 0 to 8, yeah, we apply the bit mask, we overwrite the numbers, yeah, okay. And we can overwrite existing values, yeah, sure. Uh, so we run our given program and then we need to sum all the values left in memory after the initialization program completes. So we just run everything and then we sum everything in memory. The entire 36 address space begins initiated to the value zero in every address. Okay, so by default, an address has value zero. And in the example, only two are non-zero. Yes, because we update eight twice, makes sense. So we need to run this program. Let's take a quick gander at their input. We have mem statements, yes. We have mask statements, yes. Uh, we'll need to parse what we're seeing here. There's two different kinds of instructions. And then we just do need to run linearly through every instruction. Mask updates the bit mask. Mem is a write operation where we need to convert the number to binary. Apply the current bit mask. And live happily ever after. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I'm just thinking it doesn't really matter for part one whether we store stuff in decimal or binary. So let's just store stuff as longs. But before we write stuff to memory, let's uh, convert to binary and apply the bit mask. Why not? And then convert to decimal again. It's a bit wasteful. It's not that bad. So how many instructions do we have? 500 instructions. So I think for part one, this approach will work just fine. Let's go with the, let's go with that. So um, the only thing I'm thinking about is applying the bit mask. Might be a bit tricky. It might be a bit tricky, but there's an. I'm just gonna do the first thing that pops into my head, and that's just from left to right go every uh, 
bit in here and do what it says. It's probably a smarter way with a bit shifting and ending or oaring. But uh, let's worry about that when we need, need it for part two for performance reasons or whatever. So let's write a parser first. Every line is an instruction, yes. So let's define some types. Um, mem instruction or mem instruction. Let's keep it there, okay. And a mask instruction. Mask takes a bit mask. Yeah, let's just just make it remember as a string or let's keep it a, as a string, the bit mask for now. And mem has two values, an address and a value. Let's parse them to longs. Okay. So for every line of text we have, let's parse a line. Um, and let's start with mask. So this is an example of a line. Mm, regexes would work. String start would work. Let's do string start. So let's type, give this a string type. So compiler can help us. If it starts with, or if, uh, nah, we're fine. If we split the line on this string, and if we get something, yeah, uh, string split options. Uh, let's try that out. So let's take this as our line. Let's put that in the REPL. Let's try to let's try that split. Yes, let's remove empty entries. Yeah, why not? Then we have like a single element array. So in this case, we know it's a mask. This is a really dirty string parsing magic, but it'll work. Um, then return mask, and it is actually the value in there. Now, otherwise, we have a mem address. Let's use uh, something else there. Yeah, and else. Let's return a mem of something something, and those are longs. So this should be able to parse our input or our what? Oh yeah, we need to do the map for every line. There we go. So if we parse input now, or like our mask string. It's treating everything as a mask. Interesting. That's not what I was trying to do. So let's try a memory statement. That's not what we are trying to do. This is more what we're trying to do. 
There we go. This will be better. First is a mask, then we have a sequence of mems. Yeah. Okay, let's parse a mem. Are we going to do the same substring package or are we going to admit we need a regex? I'm going to admit I need a I need a regex. <laughs> so let's work with regexes instead. Um, Uh, in this case, we actually need know that it's only it, it can only be the mem instruction. So uh, pattern dot match the line itself, and never think about regexes without using my regex or magic. So this is the line. We need to find uh, this number. Um, those brackets are, yes, they need to be escaped. Ah, and the closing one doesn't need to escape. That's weird. Let's do it for consistency. And then we have the value. And that is more than one. So there we go. Um, we need to capture the address is this how you capture no well how do you define a regex group do you have to name it because i've been using names yeah it's, i thought it was just parentheses capturing group group doesn't seem to be oh there's an error Error unmatched opening parenthesis. Ah, this needs to go there. Now we're capturing a group. Yes, we are. And we need to capture the value as well. So this will actually work for us. Let's grab, grab, grab. Mm, let's pull that in and play around with it a bit. Yep. Uh, what's the what's the thing? The groups. Is it the first group? No. Second group. Second group is our one thousand. So this is our address. And we need the value. Let's parse that into an along, and the value itself is the next. And let's parse that into along, and then we need mem address value. So I think we just parsed our input. I'm going to encode these two lines into tests because I'm really uncomfortable working with regexes. And it always helps to have <clears throat> some assurance. So let's test a parse for a single line containing a mask. And that should return a list. No, it's not a list. It's a sequence. Let's just make it a list. There we go. So we're expecting a mask with a long bit string, yes. This is our expectant parse result. Looks good. Let's do the same for the uh, mem instruction. Yeah, so now we're expecting a mem with those two values. Yeah, looks good. So tests in place, let's continue on. 
this was the parsing part. I'm gonna throw away my ripple because I put some stuff in there. This so fresh start and a sip of coffee. <clears throat> There we go, that's parsing. Now we need to execute every instruction. Um, I think we need to start with mem, no with mask. Mask will be the more logical starting point. Um, and so again, we need to run over a sequence of instructions, which we have now after our parse, or let's, let's just define them right here. So it's parse of whatever we're trying to do. So input, for example. This is our set of instructions, and now we just need to run over it in sequence and do stuff. Running over it in sequence, it's like a go-to answer is fold, so I'm just going to use a fold. Yes, and fold needs a state, and I think we're going to just define a state. State has to be our address space, so for example, a map mapping addresses to the value stored in the address. By default, it was zero. Yeah. And next to the address space, we need to store the current bit mask. And that's all we need, I think. We don't need an instruction pointer. We don't need anything. We're just going to go, go, go. So what do we call this? Let's call it computer. So we have a computer and it has a current bit mask. And we have it as a string. Let's keep it as a string for now. And it has address space. What's it called? Addresses. Yeah, let's just call it addresses or memory. What do we want to call it? Let's call it memory. Memory mapping. Uh, Mapping addresses to the value stored. They're both longs for now. So there we go. So this is the state. We start with uh, current mask being nothing, right? Does our example start with a mask statement? It actually does. Does every example start with a mask statement? It does. Should we assume? Should we make an assumption or should we like handle that there's no mask case? Let's handle that there's no mask case. So mask is not always there. So when we begin, we don't have a mask and our memory is an empty map. So we have, I think we have a fixed range. Everything is 36 bits. So in theory we can initialize the map with all zeros but that's a waste of time because we'll we'll handle the, that in our like get stuff from memory or store stuff in memory we'll handle the default zero case over there so this is our initial state now we need to run the instructions so instructions instructions uh, let's fold over them with the folder, we'll call that run instruction, and the initial state for the fold. There we go. So we need to define a run instruction function that takes a computer, computer, and an instruction, and it should return a new computer or the new state of the computer. There we go. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So get, depending on the instruction, we can do two things. So let's match. If it's a mask, that's the easiest one to do first. Uh, actually, this is pretty easy. We just update the mask or the current, uh, what's it called? Current mask. So this was handling the mask instruction. This was actually handling the mask instruction. And then we need to do the mem case, which has a, an address and a value. 
and apparently I need those parentheses. And now it's a bit more tricky. So let's call the applying the mask. Let's call applying the bit mask. Let's call that mask. So that's a apply mask, which is the computer's current mask to a number. And we need to apply it to the value. And then we need to store. Yeah, let's just try the function store in computer at address the masked number. So this is a bit what I want uh, to do. So we need to define two functions. One is mask application uh, on a mask. So given a mask and a value, apply the mask to the value. Right now, let's not do anything. So apply mask returns a long. Yeah, that'll work. And let's do store because we don't need to read actually. Yeah, we don't need to read from memory. Okay, that works. So store given a computer, an address and a value. It should just update the store, but let's, or actually that's this is the easy part, storing. So let's do that. Uh, let's do that now. So this uh, returns a new computer, but we change the memory, call it memory, and it's the original computer's memory. But we do a map dot add of at address of value. Now, if I am not mistaken, map add works. Uh, it overrides existing keys. So let's just try that. Let's do a or let's do it here. Let's make an empty map. Let's add something. Uh, on one, let's add two. So now we have a map with one tuple, yeah. And if we add something again on one, for example, three, I'm guessing it'll override uh, the, the value already there. So now we should have a map with one, three. Yes. So it silently overrides values, which is actually just fine in our case. So when we store something, we just add the, ad the value at that address in our memory, and that's all we have to do. So Final sub problem we need to tackle is applying a bit mask. Okay, um, uh, for us this right now is a string and this is an integer or a long. Yep, yeah. it's a decimal number. So first thing that need or the naive approach, which will work, so we're going to do it, is to convert a the decimal to a To a binary number and then just loop over the mask and apply every bit of the mask and then convert back again to decimal maybe we do need to look up like x or x and applying bit masks the only thing i'm confused about is bit masks usually have like only ones and zeros which is like let this bit through or uh, block this bit but the X is throwing me off. It means like, yeah, it's throwing me off. It's not two options, it's three options. Let's just loop over the mask and deal with every digit. So we need a binary representation of value. Uh, there's, there has to be something out there that can help us. Um, And actually, I don't know if I need binary. I need like a, a list of bits that will be easier to work with than the binary number. Uh, you can convert to int given a base. Maybe that's enough. Is there something to convert from? Too long. Yeah, so we can parse. 
uh, too long. No, there's 14 overloads. Oh dear. <laughs> Let's look at them all. Float, blah, blah, blah. so this is just conversion of all the data types. This is just parsing a string, I'm guessing. Let's see. Yeah, so this was not what we're looking for. Doot, 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 doot. No, no, no. From base, from base. So a string from base. So for example, if we try to do one, two, four. So this should be four in binary. And if we parse that from base two, that should return four. Yeah, that's actually working. So we have a way to go back to the long world. Let's remember this. Uh, do we have a way to go from the long world to this kind of world? Uh, bit lists of bit without having to write it ourselves because i i know you can do it with some recursion but uh ah, this this looks interesting convert to string you can also apply a, a base so let's open up system and then we can just type convert yay um so let's try convert string so a string so say we have a long uh long i can see that is correct <laughs> there we go and uh two so convert this to a string but do it in base two so this should be like one zero 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 yes let's make it nine to be sure sure so this should have a one at the end yes Okay, these are nice functions to have in our tool belt. Let's use them. So this is parsing a long to a sequence of bits. So we have to do this with the value. Let's call this value bits. And let's give them types. And now we need to loop over the mask and apply the bit, every bit of the mask. So mask is a string. Let's also make that explicit. It's weird to see like partially typed function declaration. So there we go. <clears throat> so let's loop over every bit in the mask. Mm, actually, it doesn't matter. I was thinking like, let's keep it in a list world. Doesn't matter because we go back to a string anyhow. So uh, just map and it's the most significant bit to the left on every case, right? So they line up. This is the mask. Is this the mask? Yes, it's the mask. It's not reversed. And then we go look at every combination. Oh no, we actually we look at the mask and X means just get to the bits value. Uh, one means overwrite with a one, a zero means overwrite with zero, cool. So actually I'm not gonna loop over the mask, I'm gonna loop over the mask zipped with uh, zipped with our bits. Do we need to worry about those not being of identical length? Yes, we really do, because when we Currently, when we convert a string to a to a bit string or to a, a bit list, to this, um, it's not like long enough to the mask will be longer than our the mask will be longer than our hmm, than our number. So we need some padding, or we need to do as much work. I know we al always need to do the entire mask because there can be ones and zeros in there. So actually the easiest way to move on is to pad left, left pad. Oh no, the horrors. I don't, 
it's a it's a JavaScript joke. Uh, so we need to left bit left pad sorry our value with a, a lot of zeros. Yep. Actually, does C sharp have pad? It has pad with a total width. Oh, that's exactly what we need. So pad left with a total width. Total width was what? 36 bit numbers? Thirty-six bits. Where are you when I need you? Thirty-six, yeah. Thirty-six bits and let's pad with zero. Okay, so this is black magic enough for me to extract into a function and play around with. So let's call this two bits. And it takes a long in our case. And let's also do the the other way. And that is actually the other this one. So let's just convert a string back to a long or a sequence or characters back to a long. So let's type this explicitly as a car sequence. Uh, okay. And let's convert this to a string itself. So uh, that's right. Yeah, let's extract that. So so bits. Let's make it a string again by uh, converting every character to a string. And that's uh, that's really overkill, but it works. And pasting all the strings together with this delimiter and then just convert this string back to uh, float given that it's in base 2 this should work actually so two bits from it let's let's play around with it so uh, 8 is an interesting example what's the return type String, yeah, that's correct. So that's actually one, two, four, eight, and we have 36 bits. Let's verify that. Oh, one pair of those should work. So let's verify our length. Ah, come on. How long are you? Thirty-six. Yes, I am comfortable enough with the two bits. Let's do the from bits. So that's actually the reverse operation. Can this deal with leading zeros? Why, yes, it can. So this is a really small and stupid example, but I'm like my mind is at ease. It looks good enough. If things start blowing up, probably the bug will be in our conversion stuff. So, okay, we converted this to, a, or to bits. Now we can look at every value of the mask with every bit, like pairwise, that's what zip does. So now we have a, a bit mask or a mask bit and a value bit. And let's do a quick pattern match. So match on the bit mask or the bit in the mask. If it's a X, do nothing. So we take the value bit. If it's a one, we need a the one. What's the value bit, a car? So, so yeah, actually, otherwise just feed through uh, the mask. Ones and zeros is all ones and zeros all get to like let to pass through. So if the mask says one or zero, that's what they get. Uh, so this is the masked value, and then we just convert this masked value back again to along with our 
magical uh, from bits. And over here we can use two bits of the value. There we go. I think we just implemented bit masking. Let's try one of the examples. So given this mask and 11, we should get 30, 73. Uh, what's it called? Apply mask. So let's write a test. Apply mask. Given what exactly? The mask and 11, we should get 73. 11, we should get 73. It's saying it gets something else. Yes, we get 73. Okay, works. Let's run everything. Cool. Um, why is this complaining? String, string, option. Oh, yeah. We should we. Mm, we made like a, our mask optional because when a program starts, we don't have a mask. It's like the first instruction. And this is like a, an implementation of the don't make illegal states irrepresentable. So it might be that we have like an invalid input program or something that we don't have a mask. I like my code to explicitly handle that. And that's uh, what we did with the, the option here, string option. But this means that our code has to handle the, whoops, there's no mask case. And that's what our dear F sharp compiler is complaining about. Uh, but actually here, I'm willing to let it go because in the case of no mask, when we apply a value, we should crash anyhow. So I'm gonna do some something terrible, never do this. This actually throws away the entire uh, optionality of, of computer.mask. So let's throw away the entire optionality. It has to be uh, string and let's just do this and make it really clear so things crash horribly when we have a <laughs> when we don't get a mask in so that should also work and then we don't need to do this and we don't need to do this there we go so I think this is enough to run our instruction set or run our program on it yes and now we need to sum all values left in memory. So this is our final computer state. So uh, we can grab everything in memory. Let's grab the entire address space. Let's throw away the uh, addresses. And only keep the values and let's sum everything up. What? Oh yeah. There we go. It's a big number and it has an L we don't need for the input. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. That was part one. It was fun. It was a bit of a playing around with bit conversions or like with a from integer or decimal to binary and back again and last year there was also some examples and i just like wrote recursive functions to do the conversion myself and it's fun for education educational purposes but this actually was more it was less taxing on my brain so thank you nick uh, for showing me these conversion functions anywho part two For some reason, the Seaport's computer system still can't communicate. It must be using version 2 of the ship. Yeah, of course. The version 2 decoder ship does not modify the values being written at all. Oh, interesting. It acts as a memory address decoder. A what now? <laughs> I just love these little, these little like Easter eggs and, and, and jokes. So it's a, something of a SNES, a SNES. Uh, I look at it in my own spare time, won't waste your time with it. So immediately before a value is written to memory, each bit in the bit mask modifies the corresponding bit of the destination memory address. Oh, so we're not, in part one, we're like changing the values you store. 
actually we need to change the address where we store stuff. And this node, I, I was going to say um, these are the same rules, like the same principle of applying the mask. No, <laughs> I see different terms floating. What now? A floating bit fluctuates unpredictably. There's a whoa. That's not that's not binary. <laughs> floating bit is not connected and instead fluctuate unpredictably. In practice, this means the floating bits will take on all possible values. Oh dear. <laughs> Wait, I have to process this. Okay. Uh, so potentially causing many memory addresses to be written all at once. That is that is a crazy cool computer. So we're given a mask and an instruction to store something. Yeah, so when we're asked to write to memory address 42, and we need to write 100. And then we apply the bit mask, but we apply to 42. Yes. So again, take the binary representation, take the mask. But then the rules change. Zero means leave the bit unchanged. One is overwrite with one. Ah, now we're XORing. Okay. But uh, so this is more of a traditional bit mask, except for this part, the floating part. That's a really cool twist. Yeah, that's a really cool twist. So uh, for this example, it means did, 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 nothing, 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 float. Four bits are overwritten, yes. Three of which are different, and two of which are floating. How does three and two equate to four? Or I'm reading mis or, or I'm not reading it correctly, or there's a typo in here somewhere. Uh, floating bits take on every possible combination. So with two floating bits, you have four actual addresses. Yes. Okay, this is enough to get started on the applying the bit mask. So it writes the value 100 to these four addresses because we have two floats, floating bits in the mask. Yeah. So let's think about this. We have an address and we have the bit mask. We again apply the mask to the result, but this can contain X's. Or we can just go directly from given decimal 42 Given this mask, it should return like these four addresses. I think with our current design, that will fit better. So the apply mask function will not return a new uh, masked decimal or bit mask decimal. It will return a list of bit mask decimals and will do the floating, will float around uh, in that function itself. Uh, in theory, in theory, we have 36 bits. If every bit floats, we have a 36 bit write operation. This can be a long list, yes. Oh boy. So, yeah, everything remains the same after that. Everything remains the same. So, the only thing we have to change is we apply the mask to the address, not the value, and that returns a list of addresses not a single address that sounds actually quite reasonable should i be worried about performance doesn't no not yet so everything can change uh, stay uh, apply mask is not going to work on value but on address but the big change will be mm -hmm. let's first uh, change our signature so this does not return a single thing but a list now we should get some problems here. Yeah. Um, so if we have a memory instruction, yes, we need to mask, but we don't need to mask the value. We need to mask the address. And then we store uh, the value at address at masked. But that's a list. So we need to do this consecutively. Consecutively doing something. 
can work with a fold, it can work with a fold. Uh, so for every masked address, uh, let's call this destinations. So for every destination, So for every address we get back from applying the mask, we should do the store operation. So actually we should do the store. Now uh, what's the state? Let's call that computer as well. So we should do the store operation and that is literally this. But we are storing at address. There we go. And the initial state for our fold is the computer we're working with. So I think this changes up. The only thing we need to fix is the apply mask function now. Yes, and that's also complaining in our test. So for now, this is probably enough to satisfy the compiler, yes. So let's kind of run this, see that nothing too bad broke. Or yeah, we changed the entire behavior of the program, but at least not the mask application. Um, so let's let's play around with mask. The ones and the zeros are not the hard part. It's the X's <laughs> that'll uh, throw us off. So this conversion from and to bits actually that's still relevant, but this will be a bit more tricky. Let's read it again. So a zero leaves unchanged, a one overrides with one, and an X means float. Let's do that first. So again, this same structure applies. A zero means, what was it? Unchanged, so then we need the value of the bit given, yeah. A one is override with a one. And an X is float. So let's just represent that with an X as well. So actually these two are, now let's make it explicit. The match will like become non-exhaustive, but let's make it explicit because it'll blow up anyway. So I think this like applies the rules, but we don't like do anything with a floating just yet. What's the term for computing all the addresses from a floating bit string? Floating bits will take on all possible values, potentially causing many memory addresses to be written all at once. Yeah, let's call it, let's call it whatever. Uh, apply floats of masked. So a new function appears. I'm just gonna write the top level. Uh, what's masked? It's a sequence of cars. Yeah, that's okay. And this should get mapped back to uh, from bits. So we like to end up with longs again. Apply floats. Given a bit string with X's in there should be something. And apply floats returns a collection. That's true. There we go. So this is failing. Why is this failing? Because we need lists. Let's do a list map. There we go. Okay, we're back again. Um, so, applying floats means that just go through the bit string, zeros and ones are okay, but if we encounter a floating bit or an X, then we need to, there's two valid addresses from going on from here. And we need every possible combination. Yeah, let's grab the example. Uh, four? Four sounds like a reasonable amount of things to test for. So let's try 
let's just hard code the example in when we're playing with the REPL and let's see where we get. So we go over every bit and when we hit next we fill in both values so we generate two addresses but we need every combination. <clears throat> I smell recursion or like that's the first thing that's coming to my head so let's use recursion uh, should we worry about tail recursion we'll see um, so so then when we use recursion let's rip it out the example because that will not work um, uh, if we have nothing left to do we stop yeah let's make it tail recursive actually so this is from the previous days tail recursion basically means uh, have a temporary or have an extra argument to your function where you keep the result and when you hit the the stop condition of your recursion just return that result and because of the way we're building we're building a list so we're the easiest way to do it is to append every new element to the front. We reverse uh, at the end. Uh, so this is the stop case, but in the other case, let's call this a bit and bits, B and Bs. Now it's going to be more interesting. Um, let's do it. Yeah, let's do this. A match in a match. <laughs> Why not? Uh, so if it's a one or a zero, that's okay. You can be uh... no. Nope, let's get rid of. I'm having a trouble. I'm having a bit of trouble wrapping my mind around what's going to happen. So let's do it without tail recursion first. So if we hit a one or a zero, then we just continue. So we calculate the remainder, so floats for the rest of the bits. And for every address this generates, we append the one or the zero we find here. So this is the an address and we append the current bit to, to that address uh, let's keep everything in the list world what's it not liking uh, not apply floats but rest thank you very much there we go so this handles the not so bad case of um, yeah when we encounter one or zero we don't have to apply any splitting into two ways uh, the interesting part happens here the x appears so now we need a one and a zero so actually we need to do the same thing we apply result recursively but instead of putting on the current bit which is an x we need to put on a one and we need the same list of addresses with a zero and those are characters so this is uh, all the addresses where we replace this float with one and there's one where we replace this float with zero. Oh, I can almost hear my computer explode again. I hope I'm hoping Eric is a uh, kind on us today. Uh, but anyhow, so we need both both lists so we need ones and zeros and I think this is the naive uh, floating done so let's see how that works let's open up the REPL a bit okay let's try it out warning incomplete expression yes you are right Let's get rid of that warning. Mm -mm -mm. So here, if we encounter something else, which we probably want, let's just fail.
There we go. So mm, let's not run everything. Error. We have an error. Okay, where do we make the assumption that it's a... Uh... Okay, I'm, I'm getting a bit off track here. So let's first check that our float stuff works. Apply floats on this example bit string here. Uh, okay, let's try that with some IDE support. What's it saying? Is it saying the same thing? Yeah, it's saying the same thing. Okay, so it's saying... I want to work on a list, but you're giving me a string here, buddy. Yes, because the first thing we do is pattern match. So let's just handle that by making it a list. You are welcome. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. What? <laughs> What's happening? So we have a bit string, yeah, and we have this function apply floats. Which returns a list of bit strings, yes, that's correct. But if I try it, it gives me a, an empty list. Interesting. This looks great, yeah. Um, what's happening? Where is the problem? Uh, let's try applying a float on a smaller example. Let's see where we're going wrong. Uh, let's try smaller examples. And let's do the to list thing here. So we can just type in binary strings here. So what happens if you apply floats to a 1? That's not correct. It should just return a 1. How does this work? <laughs> okay, what's happening? So apply flo floats with a string zero or a list containing character zero only. So what happens? It matches that string. And it's this case. And it's this case. And it should be dropping here. And then it recursively calls apply floats. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're saying like if there's no bits in the input, you don't have any result. But actually, it's not really true, or that's not the correct stopping condition. I think if we do this, like, oh, by the way, there is an answer, but the answer is empty. I think that'll be better. I don't think we need to worry too much about edge cases, because I am a hopeful person. There we go. So this looks better. Let's see if we can do a longer address. 101. Oh, yeah, let's include an X. So a single X should return in two addresses. Yes. Uh, something with an X in the end should return two as well. Yes. Something with an X up front should return two as well. Yes. Something with two X's should return four addresses one two three four and there's like some wait let's make that more explicit there we go one 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 zero one zero what? that looks correct mm, only thing i'm seeing is it's a sequence of cars not strings but that'll work so yeah bit of a hack here i think oh no actually it's correct for the empty string as well so forget I said anything, just a minor oversight. Uh, yep, and our floats expect expects a list, so let's give it a list. There we go, everything lines up. So we changed our bit masking. Um, let's just run the bit mask for the example. So given 42 and this mask, we should have four addresses. Oh, I'm sorry, you had to look at all those thumbnails. There we go. So 
yeah so test apply mask with this mask and 42 haha <laughs> 42 that's a, an interesting number uh, it should return like these four numbers no it's not ah oh, dear oh dear Let's make sure we're not like doing some. Ah, oh, this is better. Um, so these are some numbers. Are these correct numbers? 26, 27, 58, 59. Uh, that sounds incorrect, actually. 26, 26, 58, 59. That's correct. How can flipping. This is always one difference. So that's the one bit, yeah. And that's the 50, 20 bit, yeah. Okay. Could work. I think we're done, and uh, I'm hoping this won't burn my computer. Otherwise, we'll have to look at more intelligent ways of applying masks. But let's worry about that when we actually have to worry about that. There we go. Turns out that probably performance will not be an issue today, so uh, thank God for that. Yeah, there we go. This was a fun one. Um, so maybe a quick recap of what we did today. Um, we did the same thing we did every day. We wrote a fold. <laughs> so there you go. Bye bye. No, no. Um, so what did we do today? Uh, we parsed our input. Looking back at it, I would not have, should not have gone the, through the split route. I should have just used regexes everywhere because now there's like this inconsistency between two branches don't like it but let's not fix that right now then i like thought about a general approach which ended up being a fold and then i got a bit sidetracked with a, oh there's no mask initially how should i handle this and in in the real world let's say i would handle this with uh making the illegal state irrepresentable or like applying an option here or using an option type but that was a bit overkill for like three rules down below so we decided to revert that and the state we're using is just the current mask and our address space they're using a map um, then we did some converting from longs to bit strings and back again using the convert functions and for part two are applying a mask so that's parts here changed a bit but the general approach was the same look at every bit in the mask and its corresponding bit in the value We're using a zip and depending on what bit we have in the mask do something so zeros just fall through to the value or the bit in the value once overwrite the bit with one and x meant floating and we do that down here and floating is also pretty easy except for the the struggle I had here with the recursive or the, the stop case but floating just meant like ones and zeros cool just continue as you're doing but in the x case we need to split into two parallel worlds again the world where we fill this in with a one and the world where we fill this in with a zero and both worlds are valid so we just append both uh, solutions and then the final thing is actually just running the instructions with the fold here. So this is running every instruction given our initial state. And running an instruction is as easy as pattern matching on it and updating the mask for the mask instruction and applying the write or the mem instruction, which it now takes the mask and the floating things and it takes care of it. So this was also a bit of a tweak because now uh, we didn't have to write to a single address but to multiple addresses if there were like floats in the mask. And we did that again with a fold. Have you realized I really like folding? <laughs> yeah, fun little puzzle today. I hope you enjoyed today's uh, Advent of Code in F-sharp and I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye.